I haven't really been paying attention to marketing for this album. It's been teased basically the entire summer. I was expecting it earlier in this year, I'm not gonna lie. Apparently, you know, Drake felt it was necessary for a delay. And so uh, he needed some extra time to perfect some things, you know? Am I hopeful that those perfections were made? Am I hopeful that those additions and the extra time that I waited was worth it? Probably not, A. Hey, you never know. Drake is as surprising as an out of nowhere pregnancy. So we got Virginia Beach for the first track. Let's hop into it. 23 songs. Fuck. It's already sound kind of crazy. That's running it right there. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck what nobody talking about. That's just running it. My nigga eating right now. He is. He on top of that. It reminds me of, uh, you know, uh, My Eyes from the Travis Scott album. I don't know what that vocal is in the background. Y'all are saying it's a Frank Ocean sample? Yeah. I chase feeling like a fencing man. Introduce you to my friends, girlfriends. You ain't interested in making friends. I'm not, I'm not even really listening to the bars like that. Like, I get what he's trying to say. I get, like, kind of how sappy this track is, too, by the way. But, like... It's not a, it's not even really about what he's saying. It's the feeling that he's providing me right now. This vibe just works. And I've said this already. He just works so much better when he's not trying so hard. You know, when he's not intentionally trying to be like the best rapper in the world or whatever the case is. Like, I feel like when he's just in a bag or in a pocket, just like this, it works. I like the sample too. I think that's majority of where my enjoyment comes from with this song, but Drake doesn't ruin it. You know what I'm saying? He kind of knows how to fall into the correct pocket on this song and kind of make it feel effortless. Now, if I go back and I start listening to the bars, am I gonna find something that's gonna make me wince? Probably, probably, but on first listen, it gives me a nice ethereal vibe. Very nice and atmospheric. I like the tones on this track. Praying, praying. Thank you. Pray again, pray again. Find okay. Definitely giving me discount uh Ty Dollar sign right now, but purse for yourself, purse for your niece. No, you don't do perks, baby, but Take your time. that's a purse that they miss. God forgive me. Father, I've seen find amen. That's what he meant by that? Hey, it's not for me. It's not geared toward me. You know what I'm saying? It's not geared toward me. That's like, that hook is offensively bad. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, no, not the voicemail. <laughs> you know, when I say Drake is best when he's not trying, I think he should still actively try to avoid talking about his relationships like this. Calling for you with 21 Savage is track number three. She was 21. She know I call me static. Shorty still young, so she don't know the classes. I see her body when I'm before the other nigga I see is my son. So what? Be a victim. I was trying to dance with the bitch. I can see myself liking this. Now that I see what pocket he's in, I know I'ma like this later. It's not hitting me right now, but I'm speaking for the future, Sean. Future Sean. I can see me mouthing the lyrics outside of the 21 verse in the beginning. Outside of the 21 uh, line in the beginning of the song. I mean, I can still say that because I'm not 37, but um, I can I can see it. I can see it. You're ruining it, bro. You're ruining it. We were not full. Whack ass vacation. The chef is feeding us the same meal every day. Like I was like in sorry for your Bitch, loss. Please, God damn, dude, why be quiet? Man, listening to you spit nothing for like two and a half minutes straight, please. Fuck! How long was she talking? Holy shit! 155 to over three minute mark is crazy. Dude! All of my kids get left on her mouth. She says she don't believe in abortion. Oh, you ain't got you a boyfriend. I see he be on his. I do think it's entertaining seeing the different ways in which 21 Savage says he got hit. There's like. He says the same thing pretty much every feature, but like a different way to say it. And he always includes, you know, one of those. So, I mean, that's cool, I guess. I mean, I went through the motions on this track. I liked it at first. You know, I can see where the vision is going. I see me loving the first part. Then there's this two and a half minute almost <coughs> interlude of this chick just basically saying absolutely nothing, just taking up real estate on the song where, I mean, a, a transition into 21 would have been preferred. And then 21 gives a pretty forgettable verse on here. Um, not saying it's bad, but you've heard this one 21 Savage verse. You've heard the ones that he's given for about the last, 
I don't know, year and a half, two years by now. So uh, expect it, you know, expect it. But I did like where Drake was going in the beginning of this. I know you a cat, but can your pussy do the dog? Let's go pound for pound. I mean, how can you keep it a buck if you ain't got no bucks? It's crazy with lie. Don't even know how he escaped. The chain on the neck. God damn. Can your cat do the dog? I think you asking for something else at that point, Drake. What does he mean by that? I don't know. I'm gonna just let I'm gonna leave him to his own devices. I'm not even gonna try to decipher that bar. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just assume. I don't know. Like, can you fuck me back? I don't know what he was trying to say. I don't know what that means. You scared a little Aubrey, little Drake, my nigga. You 40. You not little no more. Oh, okay, this is just going over my head. Fear of Heights is just a song that went over my head. You know, that I'm I'm just not enough of a visionary to get it. Daylight at number five. Too complex. I carry a whole lot of gold on my neck. He talking down to get put in a lake. Shot him in daylight. Shot him in daylight. Like anyone home, we knock your niggas, we close here as fuck, we drop your niggas, like Lenny Kravitz show, we rock your niggas. Don't talk to my man like that. I like it when you like it. Mmm. Both of Push's sons on a track. Crazy. Uh, alright, alright, bro. And I Ain't nothing wrong with putting your kid on the song, bro. That's actually hard as fuck when you really think about it, you know what I'm saying? Cause plenty of artists do that. I think it's a great thing to do just on a track that means a little bit more you know like i feel like daylight is just so it's such an expected drake trope at this point that like having your son at the end of it it's just like this is a mean nothing track and i'm gonna put my kid on this one that's kind of crazy you know what i'm saying like i feel like my son deserves an outro or intro kind of cut not like a throwaway cut you feel what i'm saying like i feel like the adonis you know i feel like he deserved more than that i have zero clue what i'm about to get but let's hope we got to be hopeful it's usually send a verses back to me and they be terrible just like a two-year-old i love a dinner with some fine women when they start i'm letting it rock because i love the mystique i still want to give me a song where i be they waiting on the kid to come drop like a father to be love when they argue the hardest mc is it k dot is it R? yeah muhammad ali the one that they call when they shit ain't connecting no more feel like i got a job and i tea rhyming with me is the biggest mistake. I still two minutes left. What more do you have to say? Man, I pack them in this phone like some sardines and they send me naked. How is it that we tricked ourselves into allowing Drake into the top three conversation um, when he's rapping like this for so long? Maybe he just don't want to do it on this track, but I know he's capable of better cuts like this. I know he's 100% capable of rapping better than this because he's shown it. He's shown it. And the nigga watched him on his own song. J. Cole just watched the fuck out of Drake just now. And I feel like Drake came back, made this extra verse after this song was over, after the J. Cole feature, trying to clean up a little bit. It still didn't work. This Drake versus ass. I don't give a fuck featuring a yeet. I was on as a label. I stay with that on like a tie. I stay with that on like a bagel. Rapping my shit that you never did. My dog in it can like a metal lid. But he and Drake together is like a... Random combo. I will give J. Cole credit for this though. In the last song that we listened to on stream well Yachty, Cole specifically goes on this little mini tangent about how rappers that are kind of like in his generation have to do so much uh style alteration and basically swagger jack into a degree to keep up. And that's what I get from this song. I don't really feel like Drake is like inspired to do this sound because he like genuinely likes it he obviously attached himself to yeet immediately didn't build on top of the style didn't progress it didn't further it in any way not saying that you have to but for me to take this like step or this direction seriously i just feel like i don't know some level of creativity with this sound should have been done on drake's part and it really just feels like something that yeet just was like yo or something that drake called yeet was like yo you got any extra laying around and he was like yeah i'm gonna see what i got in the stash and then they came together for this track you know what i'm saying on some send me to send me to be i'll put on a feature type shit not even that i was there you know i don't really just get much from that track at all but it's not it's not like a horrible song it don't like sound awful or nothing like that but i could easily get something like that from yeet by himself 79 69 santa uh, it's track number eight. Y'all saying this is me? It's definitely probably gonna be my favorite then. Why this sample? Why are you sampling this? Seven, nine, six, nine, seven, nine, six, nine. Since I had some space to myself. When I said I was gonna like this, I meant like typically y'all don't be seeing the beauty in certain shit. And so what I meant it like what I meant 
what I was trying to say. No, no, no. Listen, 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 because you're doing the most. What I was trying to say beforehand, sometimes y'all don't be seeing the beauty in certain shit. So, like, I got my glasses on, my fender bender, so I could see through the smoke and mirrors. And sometimes I could see the value in a thing before you see it. So all I was trying to say was maybe I could see what you didn't see, but I see that you were seeing the same thing that I'm seeing, and I didn't, I didn't really see nothing to begin with anyway. So it's, it's okay. Playing that shit on being 25. That excuse for me just doesn't fly. Well, I'm not saying 25 ain't grown, but like maybe you should up the age a little bit, bro. This is Curtis Cut a bitch off. And you're listening to B A R K Radio. Why didn't he have Snoop Dogg narrate this whole Teams album? Why didn't you have him narrate? I know he would have done it. I, why didn't I why didn't I think that's probably some shit that he probably thought of after the fact. Why didn't I think of that? I would be completely okay with him having delayed this album one year. If it meant Snoop narrated the entire thing. What the fuck? Drake can do. He has the opportunity to do the biggest of things. And he's the biggest settler. Your resources, your reach, your range. The people that are willing to work with you. Even if they didn't like you. Just because you're Drake. Why do you stop short all the time? You can go to the moon and back. And you just go out your front door. That song was long winded as shit. Bahama Promises. Drake broke and pinky promises. You fucked up my Bahamas trip. I, I fucked up all but T3. I think the placement is a little awkward. Because uh, it comes just after a track like Slime You Out. Which, if I remember correctly, was Drake talking about, you know what I'm saying, how dirty he would do people he was with um they were basically liars Sizzle was kind of on that same energy too but with the men it's such a like drastic break on whatever gas sh you know should have been generated from the album up until this point and i think drake even on this track doesn't really do much with the vibe that he's creating the aesthetic that he's got in the background is kind of made for a singer um but he's not going or taking himself to task with the vocals it's a nice track it's chill it's laid back but when it comes to cuts where drake is singing and he's all alone and he's by himself in this type of you know, spaced out, atmospheric, sad background. I just think he could do a lot more. Tried our best at track number 11. This was leaked. This was leaked. You're right. I haven't heard the full thing, though, but this was leaked. Girls in the bathroom laying down white lines like supremacists. Why hard is he ever miss? In the club with your gay friends. Always put you on a straight flight. You wide sell like buy me some. I'm said the writer strike hit Drake hard. <laughs> I'm surprised that Ty Dolla Sign wasn't on that track. I'm, I'm actually shocked at how much Ty Dolla Sign influence I hear in music that he don't really get credit for. That's actually fucked up. I'd be pissed the fuck off all the time if I was Ty Dolla Sign. Tracks. Like, a track like that to me, not bad from Drake. But I do think that, like, the more I listen to it, I'll realize, like, how much of a guilt trip these songs end up sounding like. Like, the relationship cuts that Drake be making, I feel like they're all, like, guilty texts that you send to somebody who don't want to fuck with you no more. Like, oh, you really not going to come out? You really not going to pop out tonight? That's crazy. Remember when I did this? Remember when I did that? Remember when I did this? Maybe you should date someone that got more than you or, like, at least as much as you so you ain't got to talk about how much you get and do for them. That way you can actually have something to rap about in your relationship as opposed to talking about how much you bought them. Cause it all comes out like the same shit you know what i'm saying like maybe you should do that maybe talk to somebody that's got a little bit more or something like that i know you in an ecosystem where you're gonna have more than everybody but like do something with somebody that can do for themselves to a very high degree and then you could talk about the substance of said relationship more than uh the the the, the possessions that you got them that's just me though through the world interlude at track number 12. He knew not to touch that beat either. He knew not to touch that. The way he been rapping on this album so far, he knew not to fuck with that. Drew a Picasso at track number 13. That was great, actually. That's probably one of my favorite tracks off this album, if not my fave. You cannot find a one better than it. Try to do right by you, but we came in, so I tried. You what? Man enough to tell you you was wrong. Man enough to not put it in a song. For the word to sing along. Damn. Okay, Drake. Now that's what I like to see. I want to die, okay, buddy? No, nah, he said he was embarrassed and he wanted to die because he listened to the first 11 tracks off this album. He heard it and he was like, damn, I really said that. But I like what he's doing here. Man enough to tell you that you was wrong. Let me put myself in position where we might never fuck again. It was never supposed to get that, nah. Why he sound like black? He sounds exactly like this nigga. Steve saying that you miss me and I won't say it to you, but I miss you more. Said we got each other back if the shoe was on the other foot and it was me, it would have been Gorilla War. I like it. 
How, when was the last time we got a party next door in Drake Cut? You're too down with the gang, yeah. You're one of my members. Uh, my ex girl was a head case. I cannot defend her. Tell him why October is a dangerous gang, month. Yeah. Tell him why October is a dangerous time. Some other guys in the city, what happened? LOL gang, we the last ones laughing. Are you jacking and more jacking? Charlie a 10, but not the messy hole. Yeah. You standing tall like the stars bang bang. Yeah. Yeah. You know the airport is calling. Nah, you know the airport is calling. Hey, I don't give a fuck what y'all are talking about. This is not bad. I'm taking this. I don't give a fuck. I'm keeping this with me. If nothing else, I'm keeping this with me. Feel like I'm bi cause you're one of the guys, girl. Oh, Bisexual bar is crazy. But you know what? It's cool. Everybody bisexual. They did a study like a long time. What are your sources? Do your research, bro. Do your own research, bro. I, I, why do I have to do everything for y'all niggas, bro? Um, what will Pluto do at track number 15? I like that track. You know, um, people might not like it, uh, but that's right up my alley. I've been listening to Drake for a long time. Also, as a consequence, I've been listening to P and Door, P, P and B, P and D for you know about as long. That combo makes sense. Even if it's not good, I'm always gonna have an open ear to it. But it just happens that that song was good. What will Pluto do at number 15? If this don't have a future feature on it, hidden, I'm gonna be very upset. Hey, dropping two Cialis in a liquid. Okay, I ain't got a strap. I gotta risk it. Okay, ba baby mama out the picture. Okay, think I'm Illuminati cause I'm rich. Well, okay, taking new sales, new road. Okay. Oh yeah, I like that. See, see, he, see. When I can finish your sentences, that means something else. Actually, no. Nah, but when I can finish it for you. But really hate a rap nigga. Let's not even talk about them fuck niggas. Fuck them. Working on it, I'm not finished. Last time I saw her, she was fucking with my nigga. So all the parties at track number sixteen. I'm kind of upset he didn't keep up with the okay thing though. Okay thing made that really really catchy. Katie by the turn of dark. She had all the party. Tito with 300, she just did her bar. Girl, you such a thorny. Hey, soul baby. It's so verse shorter than Jonathan Major's career. SMH. You could have ended this song a while ago, bro. Or just giving Chief Keef a longer verse, bro. You don't have to end every song that you start, bro. This is just a, clay, a case, though, of where Chief Keef takes the song to a peak and then it drops off dramatically once Drake comes back in. I know we have always pressed Drake about changing slash making a new sound, but what would you want that to sound like? The point is, nobody ever knows what it sounds like, but they just want it to be not the same as what you've been making. I'm not the one who's making the music. Drake is, and he wants people to listen to it. But over time, the way that you and keep the way that you keep fans engaged is to give them something new or refreshing to hear over time. And it can't be the same old, same old. At the very least, if your content isn't going to change, the way you uh push it out there or the way that you present it should be different and i think it's just been so samey for so long that people just know what kind of drake they're gonna get before they even start an album at this point when people say that they miss the old drake they're not talking about they want him to remake songs that old drake used to make the feeling that drake used to give way back when was just that he was hungry that's really all niggas mean when they say they miss the old drake drake was just on a run on a tear because it seemed like he had a goal in mind now that he's at the top it don't seem like he needs to prove anything anymore he don't have nothing else that he want to do he ain't got nothing else that he need to prove so like obviously when they're talking about we want the old drake we want the you that don't got everything obviously that's what they mean. 8 a.m. in Charlotte. Yeah. Y'all said conductor did this? My hair on the road. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Fuck up this beat is nasty. Dusting. Oh. Chilla, you shock we skiing out in Court Chevelle. Breaking nah, news, it. they try to yeah. catch tucking tails on four quarter sales. I'm used to seeing tears drop over enormous meals. Your words don't match your actions like a foreign film. And now silence in the lamb like the horror film. Oh no. Nah. You see what I said? This is why, like I said, I had to immediately track back when I was talking about why we were including Drake in that top three conversation. Now, do I believe Drake is like the best rapper of all time? No, I don't. But acting like this nigga don't have a pen when he wants to is infuriating and dismissive at the exact same time. When he's on it, he's in another tier. He's in a, he's in an echelon. I won't say by himself, but he's up there. He's up there. You don't don't count him out. Savage got a green card straight out of the consulate. Where I go, you go, brother. Where you go, Slavian. Two on camera bowing down, but the footage is safe. Thank God, another USB to put in the safe. God, I gotta sit down after that one. What the fuck? Why he said that? 
why he did that that's so crazy oh, i just went i just went weak in the knee nigga said now nah, i'm glazing okay bro there's no healthy middle ground you can't show love because something was good and you can't say it was bad if you think it was bad there's no middle ground you gotta be a dick rider or you gotta wish a nigga was dead and i was a grown-ass nigga that nigga 26 plus talking about glazing that is verbiage for a 19 year old you old bitch and my daddy will boo -hoo. you probably heard a lot about the boy well true true best rap cut on the album whole like whole shit whole shit whole shit with An album i understand why drake feels the need to cater to such a mass like audience but my issue is really the dip in quality in those records that end up being created. So when we get 20 plus track albums and it sounds like Drake's trying to appease a little bit of everybody, the quality of those other records that he tries to dip into doesn't like stand up to some of his best cuts. Like he only goes super hard on a couple tracks out of the 25, 30 plus track album. If he did for the entire duration, then I would feel like satisfied. Even if there's a song on here that I don't like, acknowledge as my preference or as my favorite i could still be like yo that's quality the writing is good the production is good the so the sequencing of it is good the feature selection was was careful it was thoughtful it was it was thought out some of them and just some of them they just look they just sound like they were created without any any type of care in the world but 8 a.m in charlotte getting the conductor to produce the beat you know what you're doing you have to go crazy on it. uh bbl love on track number 18 it's an interlude it's that pussy open for a real one she called me a baby like us a ho 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 still waiting on a game. Nah, bro, I'm sorry. Literally, he's up here one track, boom, down here the next. I'm gonna sit down for the rest of this because uh, he just lost me. That was like when you call your pops old and then he, he starts like listing off all the reasons as to why he's not old because he still get bitches. Like he can still get attention from women. Like on some Adonis teenage shit like that, shut the fuck up. You don't even be fucking like that for real no more. And then, like, this is the song that he make and send it to him. Like, I was out here fucking before you was born. I get the bitches still. Uh, next track is Gently featuring Bad Bunny. Oh, fuck. Hey, yo, nah, 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 nah. Nah, this nigga's insane. Nigga said this is racist. Y'all remember I told y'all about the time that I like catfished the girl at my job by like trying to make her think I could write Arabic. And I just wrote a whole bunch of squiggly lines and shit like that and like called it a day. And I, then I translated it to her in English afterwards, just making up some bullshit. Like I still feel bad about myself till this day. Dennis, you said audio terrorism. Why they gotta be terrorists? Why they gotta be terrorists? Stop Asian hate, gang the fuck is wrong with you i don't know what that song was drake was definitely trying to get into his foreign bag like i said he has the resources and the know-how to get in contact with and i'm not saying bad bunny is a horrible artist or nothing like that but he has resources to get in contact with people who make like amazing i gotta put my art i got a reggaeton like i gotta say like he can he could put you know what i'm saying like he could find people that make some amazing music like that and just have them you know what i'm saying lead the way and kind of follow suit but you ain't got a fake you know what I'm saying, Latino on the song to try to, you know what I'm saying, get into that bag, Drake. Like, I just don't need that from you. Does it make sense? Yeah, but like, you not one of those, bro. You not one of them. It's cool. It's cool, bro, but you not one of those. It's all right. You don't need to do that ever again. Holy shit. Rich Baby Daddy with uh, Sexy Red and Scissor is the next cut. Bring that ass over. Let that coochie breathe. Shake the sofa. Let that coochie breathe. Not a guy to me. Nigga, this is five minutes. She a game, but she tatted a name. Real bitch, help me down for I had a that ass, bitch. Hands all you need. I got a feeling this is more than what we both say. I got a feeling this There's still two and a half minutes left, though. Like, what What more can happen? I turn you on red, we be mess my thumb. I was joking, bro. I didn't mean it. I the last thing I thought was gonna happen with Sexy Red was also gonna give a verse. I don't like I don't dislike Sexy Red either. Like I like Sexy Red's music generally, but just this is crazy. Ain't no man jacking Sexy Red says a man with no bitches. <laughs> you just expose yourself, gang. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Real niggas listen to the sexiest of the reds. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. You ain't even know how to suck it right. I taught you right. You ain't even heard of Grace. What did he say? <laughs> I know what he meant, but that's funny as fuck. Another late night 
featuring Lil Yachty, La Boat. Yeah, my bank account is mag, know you're Millie rocking. Hey, widows in my comments talking about some Millie Bobby. Look, bring them jokes up to the. For my bitch, new body, sadly, I got demo items. Don't want no apologies, just kiss the ring. Yeah, the ring. Yeah, the ring. yeah, that was trash. I ain't gonna lie. I, I didn't like that song. Track like that at like maybe two minutes would have been cool. Bars a week. Drake saying the same thing over again. He's been saying the same thing for the for the last twenty tracks or whatever. Um, I think it's really just a system of placement and oversaturation. You know, uh, content wise, I've already been given this track in various different forms. Now I just got a version with Yachty. You know, that's really why it goes or where it goes wrong. Like bonus track ass song. You know what I'm saying? But uh, away from home is the next cut. Didn't have no hoes trying to go. All these rappers love bro me. Remember. Sorry, I can't let you get away with this, bro. I can't. This is a track that's meant for V's. I'ma just be honest. I don't know why. I do know why, but I can't let you get. I I just I hear V's all over this man. Rolling through the city, getting beats. I was peeping out the streets, cause I was beefing with the bleaks. I remember. It's just wall doors and floors that only I can afford. But remember, remember Reese staying at the house, then she left me for my dog, like she never took bro, the vow. I get it. I don't care about this shit though, dude. It's like, did it ever occur to you, bro, after a certain point of listening to you talk that niggas don't know what the fuck you talking about and don't care about these random ass fodder niggas that you keep mentioning in your raps? Who the fuck is this, this nigga you just said? Who is that? How much of your own hype do you have to believe to think that niggas just want to hear you casually rap about shit that they don't even know what you talking about? I don't even, I don't know these niggas. I remember fighting over Monaco with Jason. I remember on the Who the, the fuck is Jason? Three different Jasons, my life like the Matrix. That's where, like I said, tracks like this end up losing me because I think Drake still thinks, and he, he's probably right to some degree, you know, um, that everybody who listens to his music is still enamored with like the the luxury associated with and attached to drake like i'm sitting up here waiting for him to update his diary and nigga i just want some good music that's catchy get its vibe and then you get the fuck out i don't give a fuck about nothing going on in your personal life to be honest so if you could just make an enjoyable song that's cool that's enough i don't need a five minute monologue damn near on every song though like i'm no longer you know what I'm saying? Exiting middle school, waiting for the new Drake drop. I don't care. Just make some good songs. That's really it. And I put that shit on Richard. That nigga was my best friend. Hey. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, Richard. Yeah. Me and Richard go way back, gang. I don't go that. That's my dog. The last track on this album is another four minute cut called Polar Opposites. I like the vocal runs he's going on, at least. There's plenty of people dead to me still breathing. Plenty of other ways. Here's the situation, right? Here's the situation. Drake is as long-winded as ever on this album. Uh, it really feels like the culmination of a double text that didn't get responded to. I don't think there's one track on this album where Drake is talking about his relationship from a somewhat decent, healthy perspective. Like there's almost none of those cuts. Like why is every relationship that you in or courting have to be like this abysmal, I could take you back to the hood. You better act right before I take all my shit that I gave you back ass vibe. Virginia Beach definitely got it. Uh, first person shooter. I'm enjoying that, you know, as well. Uh, tried our best. Screw the world interlude. Drew a Picasso. Members only. Those are definitely my vibe. Uh, what will Pluto do? Has a nice little. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying that. 8 a.m. in Charlotte. Probably the best track on here by far. Conductor beat. Not to say that those beats are very complicated to create, but. You know, Drake definitely knew where he wanted to go when he was trying to uh, stick with this. I got to make sure all my timestamp songs are fire. Um, but for the most part, I'm feeling like this album don't even hold a candle to her loss. I'm going to be honest with you. So for this, I just feel like easily one of his weakest records as an album. These songs sound so disjointed. They don't sound like they have any sequencing. It all feels just like randomly thrown together and mushed here. And this song goes here and this song goes here. Just thrown against the wall. None of it sounds like planned out um the features don't really seem to make sense there's some wackier features here that he definitely could do something with like sexy red and scissor on a track together but it doesn't amount to anything because he doesn't plan for it in any way it's like they all showed up to the studio randomly and was like yo i guess we got to do something at the last minute i don't expect old drake anymore if i see that as a marketing tactic at any point 
when it comes to Drake, I know it's a lie because he's not hungry no more. And and that's reasonable. Like, I know I'm not going to get old Drake. I know I'm not going to get that hunger. I'm not going to get that drive. But at the very least, I feel like he's earned a spot in enough people's lists to where we should expect him to put in a certain amount of effort. There are tracks where I feel like Drake has a basic set of skills, but when it comes to like making something better than I would expect him to make, he always falls short generally. The most resourceful he was was going to the conductor for 8 a.m. in Charlotte, I feel like. That was the most resourceful Drake was on this record. Outside of that, everything else is to a T what you could expect or assume or predict will be on a Drake record. And that's it. I don't know what dogs this is for. For the Yorkies, like the writing on this album is just, is, is horrible in comparison to a lot of what he was doing before. But this is what I said before. I think Drake should stop making albums. I've already said this. I said this like one or two years ago. I think it was two years ago. And niggas was like, no, you hate and you hate and you hate. And he's proving why he should not make albums anymore. I love, I like the scary hour shit that he did. I think he should just keep making little packs.